we shall today talk about a little bit on the Father's Day. And I would invite each one of you, please get out of the lethargy of not wanting to write, write a few lines, even 150 to 600 words of writing about your father <laughs> would be very nice. And send it to me. I would make something very special, a surprise, but provided you send it to me, I should have a few, at least six, seven. And we are so many. Send me with pictures. Okay, pictures are important. Come on, take one day. Can I have it by Monday? It will be very nice. Today's talk is after the Father's Day, when we talk about, we'll talk about what we are always facing in our life. What is that? Conflict management. But we are going to do it not on the Western theory. We are going to do it coupled with the Western and the Ramayan, the ancient, beautiful, epic, full of answers. We are going to have a relook at the Ramayan and how we can utilize the essences from Ramayan towards our life, towards our management of conflict. Let us start with a prayer. Om. Say it in your mind, say it silently, whichever way you like, but say it. Om. Get tuned in to the supreme Pranavatthvani Omkar all the time, non-stop, anantam, all around us. Om. Asato ma sat gamaya. Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya. Mrityal ma amritam gamaya. Om shanti, shanti, shanti. Sarva sukhina santu. May everybody be in peace and attain happiness and joy. May no one suffer. May all sufferings, all sicknesses and disease swiftly go away from you and those who are dependent on you because of the power of your devoting your life to the Supreme Father in the heaven, Mother, Sadvabhyapyanantamadvaitam to our gurus and understanding the supreme advaita, the consciousness within us. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May all you, all of you be peaceful and proceed with the journey. Let's start off. We got just about 50 odd minutes. And we are going to take it on straight away, get into this world of art today. So this is conflict resolution. The happy Father's Day. A dad is someone who is like this Superman, isn't it? <laughs> to all of us. Why? Because when we fall, he not only picks us up, but he allows us to fall again. Tell me one child that you know that who has never fallen down and has learned to walk or run. There is no person on this who has never fallen down. But father, mother, yes, 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 you can do it. Come on, come on. The Supreme Gurus. Our salutation to Paramahansa Yogananda, 
Teshwar Giri Lahiri Mahase. To Swami Sri Vivekananda, Holy Mother Sarada, and Paramahamsa Ramakrishna with Babaji, Kalpa Yogi Mahavatar Babaji. Krishna granting us Yoga Kshema. Yoga Kshema means whatever you have in your mind shall be granted. All you have to do is surrender and abhyasa yoga practice. And Brahma Vishnu Maheshwara with the Supreme Mother, Mother of the Universe, is protecting, will grant. We do fall down in life. There is no one who has never had a conflict in their life. <laughs> the only person who has no conflict is the dead man. Isn't it? But see, Father continuously guides us. And today we talk more on the Father. Let's us try again and again and again. As the son, the daughter start to grow up, and the I, the ego comes up, and something like this happens. <laughs> and there is conflict starts off at home itself. But in the heart of heart, you know, whatever be the totally diametrically opposite or partially different, you know that the Father is there for me. Remember one thing, Vedanta saying, self vyapi everywhere, anantam, infinite, and advaitam, only one. And that one alone, comes in with the duality. The father of the spirituality and the Vedanta in the world today, right way before Shankaracharya, Kapila, and after Shankaracharya, Balavachari, Madhavachari, Ramanujam, they all have come up. But, you know, in the Vedanta, nobody is considered as the father. Shankaracharya is just 1400 years ago, but he has brought Vedanta into prominence. And in this conflict arrangement, we generally take on the first person to bring Vedanta into the world and make it popularized in the way that a modern man and woman would accept it, like you and me, and even more modern than I, like us, like our children. You know why? Because everybody wants the truth. Everybody loves the truth. And everybody wants to face it. So what is with this father? Is the Vivekananda is considered. He's the first person to ever go down to the Western world, particularly so in America and Europe, to set up an Indian organization called Hindu organization Vedanta. He's the first person of all religion. And soon thereafter, 18 years later, Paramahamsa Yogananda went up and set up SRF. And subsequently, many others, Mahesh Yogi, and subsequently, subsequently, many others went on. But in this, why am I referring to this? Just quickly understand. What is Vedanta talking about? Vedanta's entire Vedanta, if you just want to summarize, there's only one sentence. And very simple. And you all know it. We don't know it. We don't believe in it because we find it difficult to believe in it. Why? Because of our ignorance. Not knowing. Not knowing what? of our own awareness, though we are using this awareness all the time. And okay, okay, get to the punchline. I can hear you. Punchline of that one sentence is tat tuam asi. You are that. You see, how can I be that? I am this. Who is the I? Immediately say, this is me. This is me. Body, face, and a name. How can that be? Because which one am I? The baby, the child, the toddler, then the young teenager or the grown-up, adult, or the growing ages? 
we just born yesterday and we will die tomorrow and in between this <laughs> womb to tomb is who I am? How can it be? But notice one thing that I, which was there as a baby, as a child, and the I, which is today, whether you are 20s or 30s or 40s or 80s, you are still that one I. Before you went to sleep, as you went on to sleep, in your dream state, Sapna, Jagrat, Susupti, and Turiya, one I. That I cannot be this body. It cannot be mind also. Whose mind was I? The child's mind, the baby's mind, little grown-up mind, little toddler's mind, to the seven, eight, ten years old mind, teenager's mind, grown-up's mind, adult mind, dying mind, which mind? I cannot be the mind either. My mind is happy. My mind is angry. My mind is confused. My mind is upset. My mind says, I don't understand. My mind says, yes, yes, I understand. Which one am I? Which mind is that? So neither it is the mind. And you and I, we have been twirling in it for quite some time to know that is the only one I, and that's the Turiya state, the fourth state. Turiya is the fourth, the state of mind. There is also Pancha Kosha theory, the food that we eat, the air that we breathe, the <laughs> Manumaya Kosha, right? Annamaya Kosha, Pranamaya Kosha, Manumaya Kosha, Gyanamaya Kosha, Anandamaya Kosha, none of them either, because they're all sheep. Sheep around what? around I. So with that I, the moment we understand the Father's Day or the conflict management, both becomes simplified. A different understanding happens. An understanding happens when we become aware, conscious. Suddenly you will find all kind of conflict and the gaps and the generation comes in with one thing. And that is you are the one, not me. Selfishness goes away. I say, what can I do for you? And not what can I grab? Today, if you look carefully in most of the parts, not entirely, because there are great civilization, but in the Western world, look at a simple, uh, let's say, uh, Netflix movie. Everybody's watching Netflix or, or whatever, the Tata Sky if you have you realized, have you reflected on it? <laughs> Most of the Western theory, theory film is on horror film, is with vampires, is with bloodsuckers, is with the terrible monsters, ghosts, or huge monstrous giant mechanical things, or Avengers. And it is always on what? Hurt you. I am better than you. The Mr. America Avenger team captain, he says, I have the shield. I am better than all of you. I can destroy all of you. Have you realized this? This is the general Western theory. What is it? Grab and become more powerful. Today, if you look and sincerely reflect, you and I are also drifting towards that. Most of us in the Asia Pacific, in India, we want to grab. Grab land, grab money, grab partner. <laughs> no, I like it. I must have it. So there is a beautiful ice cream shop. I remember this was in Switzerland. <laughs> we had gone. They had three cups. Smaller one, little bigger one, little bigger one. I want it is the name of the smaller cup. I got to have it is the bigger one. And I must have it is the biggest one. So notice, same, similar theory is getting a lot. Are you getting with me? Whereas look at the Indian scenario. Whether in Ramayan, whether in Mahabharata, Arjuna, Advaita Vedanta is called the triple, the pyramid. One, 
is the Upanishad. Vedanta Dhamma Upanishad Pramana. Two is Bhagavad Gita. Krishna has brought everything from the Upanishad and advising Arjuna and people like you and me. And three is Brahma Sutra. It's beautifully three sub. Now, in Ramayana, Mahabharata, etc., there are beautiful through the epics. Essences are told to us. But in everywhere you look at sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. Arjuna wanted to sacrifice and run away. He said, I don't want to fight. I don't want that land. And Krishna brought him back. Look at Buddha, sacrifice. Shankaracharya, sacrifice. Everybody. India, mother, all mothers sacrifice all over the world. I would be blind or partial if I just say Indian mothers. No. But Indian mothers more prominent to this because you and I may be witnessing it more. Um, the other mothers generally would find there is some percentage of the mothers who always try to say, I have a life of my own. What about me, myself? But the most Indian mothers today, barring a few who are a little confused, little ignorant, they're a little torn between the instinctive guidance towards the children and the husband and the you know, in-laws, my daughters, etc. From there, also there is me. What we are trying to say in Vedanta, when we say, Aham Brahmasmi, Mahi Brahmahu Mahavakya, Brihadaranakta Upanishad, it's also trying to see that Brahman in everyone. So when you see that, you suddenly get into the Advaita language now, and you remember. We have talked so much and we'll keep on talking about the famous example of the clay pot. And the clay pot, we have made it vanish many a time. No? <laughs> Where is the clay in the clay pot? Everywhere. In the bottom, in the center, in the top, in the top, lid, inside, everywhere. So, what is pot? Pot is just the form and a name and a function of the clay. What is a wave? Wave has water in it. Wrong statement. That means I can separate the water and wave is separate. Remember the, our famous understanding of subject and object. I began to understand. I have studied it in English grammar. All of you have done. <laughs> subject is the one is the doer. An object is which is being done. On which doing is done. In Vedanta, you realize, Aham Brahmasvi, I am the subject, and everything else in this universe is an object, including my mind, my thoughts. Why? Because I experience my mind. I experience my thought. I experience my body, my senses. Who is this I? It's that Turiya I. With that Turiya I, when you get linked up, you connected with the father of the universe, which is you, Tat Tomasi. With this little father and the Western theory, look at this, Dasharatha and Rama. Perfect relationship. Rama, no generation can. Whatever Dasharat says, Rama says, as you say, Dasharat was taken by Kaikei. And he had promised, so he couldn't say no, because one promise is done is promise. He didn't want to. But notice, Rama realized because of Kaike. Have you ever thought of it? Have you ever thought when I'm looking at Rama with this as I'm studying to present to you all? Rama realized my father loves me so much that he couldn't live on this earth if I'm next to him. And yet, think again, Ramayana is teaching us, once I have spoken, I cannot break it, it's Dasharat. 
Yes, he proved to be one who had given a promise and he is generally blamed. But look at the Father's Day. He had spoken a word. He showed it to Rama. Though Lakshmana told, Father Dasharath is taken in by Kaikeyi. She is a bad woman. Don't listen to him. Rama said, I cannot. Father has spoken. I have to make sure that what he has spoken, I have to fulfill it. Ayodhya Basis, everybody, all the brothers, Bharat wasn't there, but everybody said, you don't go, you stay back. He said, no, I must. I will go and alone. And look what happened. He realized he has a wife, just married, could have stayed back in the kingdom, no? No, I go with you. And this is a beautiful, another analogy. If you look carefully, in the Western world, husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, etc., they're always side by side, holding hands, side by side. In India, it used to be that the Sita is right behind Rama. Wherever he went, Rama was always having Sita right behind. And as we get along, we'll understand another angle. This conflict is always there. Let me put it up here. In everywhere. We, you know, in the Ramayana, it reminds me of a story. It actually happened. In a train compartment, a young, newly wedded couple got in and they saw, talking about Ramayan, that an oldish man, he was reading something. So naturally, newly married husband has to prove himself. So he looks at the book and he sees, oh, so he said, oh, so the old man just looked up. And the young man said, sir, what are you reading? He said, I'm reading Ramayana. He said, sir, Ramayana is ancient time. This is all gone. This is what is our ignorance, not aware. This is why, have you realized, most people in the world, other than a few, like you and me, we are blessed to walk into the world of Vedanta. Everybody can't come. <laughs> After all, we also had not. That time our karma was not adequate. Now it is. So we are getting into the supreme science. So he's just like everybody thinks Vedanta is something too difficult, too tricky, big fat book. It doesn't work. It is all in Sanskrit and complicated language. It is not. Anything which is complicated, meaning I need to make a little more effort. That's it. If I'm not understanding mathematics that I have studied I've joined, let's say, Harvard or Stanford, and I want to do my master's in maths and then further study. I have to understand it. I may not understand it now. I may not understand how did Sachin play that stroke or the sitar or cook that dish, whatever. I have to practice it now. Vedanta is very simple. Remember, Shravanam, Maranam, Nidityasam. Listen, study. Mananam, reflect, study your mind, and Nididhyasana, practice it, practice it, practice it. Similarly, like the Vedanta, this young guy said, Ramayan doesn't work. It just so happened, a new platform came, old man didn't say anything, he kept on reading. <laughs> the couple got down and they must have had some tea and snacks or something, and the young man had just got married, not used to as yet having a wife. And wife must have gone to washroom or something like that. The, suddenly the train started moving. Young man forgot his wife and he ran and got into the train. As he got into the train, he realized immediately, oh, I'm married with my wife. And naturally he's filming and fretting and training, about to leave the station, almost leaving the platform. They so pulls the chain. And train comes to a hiding hall. He jumps down onto the away from the platform, 
and then goes running back and says, sorry, 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 and all that. And the wife upset and sad and yet happy that at least husband has come down and come back to the platform. The old man looks up and says, if you had Ravayan, you would have noticed that Rama always had Sita with him. <laughs> so one of the smart guy who was traveling in the train, he heard it. He said, sir, if having Sita with him had solved all his problem, then why did Rama suffer 90% of his life for suffering? Good question. The old man didn't answer, but I was reflecting on it. Rama did have, but you know why? Because of sessions like this, Rama taught and left messages to the world. And today, Asia Pacific, quite a bit other parts of the Western world, loves to understand Ramayana and listen. Why this conflict came in? Rama came to this earth to show it to them that conflicts are meant to be dissolved, to be resolved. But every moment of that, remain calm and collected. Initially, human being had conflicts with the nature as the human race began. And then they had conflicts with the animals. And then they had conflicts with, those of you read Greek and Roman and things of that, with the gods and goddesses. And when they were alone, and today in the modern time, we have conflicts with our mind. The conflicts are always present. Buddha said of something beautiful. Conflicts will be there and sufferings will be there. But though there is suffering, there is an answer to it. And to find that he went in. He talked about something about Kranti. He says, for every Kranti, there are seven mind moments, just moment. What it means is that in one Kranti, one millionth of a second, one second, one millionth, breaking it down is one Kranti. It means that at every second, a human mind has the potential of 21 trillion thoughts as per the ancient India. Can you imagine? So that's a lot of conflict. Think carefully. Learning to adopt, to adjust, to face the situation. Recollect whatever you have learned from your Prarabdha Karma and from your Sanchita Karma of this life. Apply it. Face it. I'm going to make the whole thing, the today's session, in just seven or eight punchline words. You will understand very simply and you will not find it difficult. But what I want you to understand, this conflict, generally we, what we do, we first face it with aggression. And most people, whether women or men, mostly it is men. <laughs> so uh, one man says, I have no conflict with my wife. My wife does what she likes to do and I do what she likes to do. I have no conflict with my wife. Now, there is a, you know, men and women and the husband and the wives and there's a big conflict going on in a big village and the people in the, give it a shot, says, we are getting bullied by our wives. Let's have a meeting in the big playground. All the men come down. We will have a meeting tomorrow morning. So early in the morning, all everybody goes there. And there were seven people on the stage. And the president of that team, he comes and stands. And he says, OK, before I start, I want to start with first. Let me see. All those who 
<laughs> follows absolutely truthfully by yourself come on to one side and everybody else go to the other side so it sets up and only one person came one side and everybody else on the side all those who are afraid of your wife go to one side everybody went on to that side and those who were not afraid only one man so the president says wow you are really courageous tell me what is the secret so this man says sir nothing my wife told me where everybody goes don't follow that go to the other side <laughs> so this is conflict i'm talking about in the aspen and we generally try to manage aggression with hostility but the hostility is never the answer so if you have enemies the best way to heal an enemy is make friends out of that enemy isn't it the after the aggression is generally the submission which i told you just now i listen to it and the third way is evasion avoid doing it the moment you avoid taking a decision in corporate management in your home anywhere when you stall it call karing it we'll do it tomorrow i'll think about it tomorrow tomorrow never comes you need to do it right now make a call right now face it vivekananda says face the monkey paramang shivananda a beautiful statement i just was reflect on it day before yesterday he said if you want to see the world beautiful practice to have a beautiful mind a beautiful mind will give you a beautiful eye and beautiful eye will see the world as beautiful you look at a baby's world a baby's eye is perfect innocent a baby looks at the world baby doesn't tell lies is we train the babies as they grow up to tell lies so where is india ashok stambh was saying sat tabhi bujayati that's how you find most of the adults do not till the time they come into the world of vedanta i hope all of you meet and standing by your swearing no telling lies when you don't tell lies and when you live like that for 12 years whatever you speak it will happen it has to happen because god himself will come down and make it happen you don't have to evade then your decisions and the positive actions positive actions would always take it just like as you see in the screen a terrible situation put it back into a smiling face conflict be positive in it face the monkey vivekananda came out from hanuman ji's mandir in varanasi kashi after doing two hours of meditation came out as he was walking some monkeys came there are lots of monkeys there <laughs> came and put their hand into his jhola he didn't have anything but he actually didn't want a monkey to come and start poking in his finger so he said hut at that monkey face and he started walking little faster monkey started running behind him he started running imagine sidhi kananda was running out of to stay away from the monkeys call it fear and one of the oldish monk who was sitting on that road said bhago mat murke dekho he turned around faced the monkey he faced the monkey vivekananda tells the moment i faced the monkey monkey goes to stop and they made little faces <laughs> vivekananda didn't make faces he was looking at the monkey that the monkey slowly submerged and submissively withdrew and ran away to other attractions so to attain peace as a prize you need to see the conflict management in another way and that is to understand that way i'm taking you across to 
the Rama's situation. Just see, Indian culture, treasure house of wisdom, and Raman is talking about conflict management. This is why Rama's life shows 90% of his life he is in conflict. Do you know of a person who's seen a monk? You and I, all of us have. See, do you know of a person who's seen an old man? All of us have seen. Do you know of a person who's seen a sick man? All of us have seen. Do you know of a person who's seen a dying man? All of us have seen. A monk, sick, dying, and dead. Look, Buddha is the only person who asked the insight, how to have the insight. Is this insight is the need? Look at the path of Rama, full of conflict, but he has always stayed calm very gentle and composed, but full of energy, full of power. He could kill anything, anytime if he wanted, but he did not. He did it only when it was required and necessary. So today, just think, born as a king, was called for coronation, deceived by mother, even the stepfather is mother, and renounced by father, whether willingly or unwillingly, another issue. But he spoke, you are right, I grant you. And then the, everybody did not give him the support that he had to take the help of the animals, is one Lord Rama. As per, if you ask this question in Google, Sita had stayed in Ravana for 12 months. But just think, you're just married and your wife is kidnapped for 12 months. Uh, though I was delighted to read it in Padma Puran, it is not 12 months, it is 11 months and 14 days to be exact. It's a figure of seven. One plus one plus 14 is, is 16, 16, seven. She stayed a newly wedded wife, kidnapped and stayed in Ravana's place. Can you imagine a man born to be a king, become a beggar, went off to the forest and he comes and tells Kaikei, mother, from this little kingdom, you've given me freedom and given me the entire, the forest of India, Bharat. See how differently his paradigm. Look at his perspective. In everything, he finds something nice. However, he never cribbed, he never cried, he never said, why me? You and I are always saying, isn't it? Why me? And look at his strength. Lakshmana is saying, don't listen. Lucky Bharat wasn't there. He would have been more forceful, I suppose. But Rama, would he have listened to Bharat? You know, he would not have. We did not too. When Bharat came and met him, where the Guhok was there almost after one year. So, this is Rama, cool, calm, and composed. And by just reading it, it's not going to help. Or just listening. But you have to reflect on it, mananam. You have to understand it. And this philosophy, make it your own. By placing your situation and facing it again and again and again. Power of insight. Buddha saw the same four guys as you and I see it every day. Do we get an insight to say, 
I have to find the answer for the suffering of the mankind. No? A dead man, sick man, monk. We see this for every day. But we never think about, let me find the answer for the suffering. You and I have been given this insight. Look at it carefully. It's not only Buddha. Look at Isaac Newton. Millions of apples had fallen before him. He the only one saw it fall and he said, why did it fall? Archimedes, many people have taken a bath in the bathtub. He took bath, many people's water must have spilled over. He's the one who said, why did it spill over? Think. Many people have seen what Darwin saw. Our children are today, you and I are today seeing an animal planet, many much more things. But do we start to investigate the origination of the mankind? That insight from Ramayana is the power to redraw your life, redesign and repaint it. Think of it, reflect on it. Once you have that power, make a difference with everyone. Teachings of Ramayana, I'll quickly go over the eight points. First is identified. Majority of the conflict becomes a conflict because it's illusionary and imaginary and we build on it. Great example, Hanumanji landed up in Lanka. He intentionally got caught and they took him to Ravana. He wanted to meet Ravana and he knew his power. And he goes Ravana just to make a lesson and make a joke out of him. He put his tail into fire and Hanumanji with that fire he burnt the whole Lanka. And when he put done his job, he was naturally wanted to punish Ravana. And then he goes to the shore to douse his tail into the ocean. Nothing happened to him. Suddenly he looks back and he sees the whole Lanka is blazing. Identification of the problem. Identified. So then he said, my God, Sita is also there. What have I done? I should have first taken away Sita and then burned Lanka. So he said, let me go quickly. First, he felt very remorseful. If you read Ramayana, he felt very remorseful. What did I do? If Sita dies, Rama will kill himself. If Rama dies, Lakshmana and Bharat will also kill himself. And all the Banaras will be blamed. And I will be the sole reason. It's better that I kill myself. He became, had that tendency as per Ramayana. Hanumanji, but naturally, that was not to happen. So he went on to see Ashok, one Sita, and he found Sita. He told Sita, Mother, I'm so happy nothing has happened to you. Sita said, your tail is in fire. Why aren't you burnt by the fire god Agni? I pleaded to fire god. That's why you're protected. So the fire god who's protecting you, don't you think he will protect me? So now Hanumanji is peaceful and runs off. And from there, he is going off to one thought dance in his mind, identify. The first insight, stop imagining and exaggerating your problems. Lesson from Ramayan. Check it, cross-check it, recheck it again and again. As a fighter pilot and as a pilot of all aircraft, particularly fighter pilot, because a lot more complex problems and switches you have to deal with, You have to check it again and again and again and again and again and again. And whenever I'm in a group, <laughs> I have one eye to see that do a double check. 
and it may be bugging for most of the people, but it is in my system now. And you would be amazed that former United States Chief of Staff, United States Chief of Staff, his name is Colin Powell. I have had 6,000 hours of combat flying without one accident. I got an accident-free, very special uh, gold medal. No accident, no writing up an aircraft, no damage to the country and the Indian Air Force. And Powell in his autobiography writing the same thing. He used to be a paratrooper. And when they go for the practice sessions or real sessions, they have to practice every few seconds they're jumping, jumping, jumping. And always, this is a system which is taught in the services, also must have been in the United States Air Force. So he checked. And you know what? Last minute, that's why they're checking in. And we call them in the Indian Air Force vital actions. Vital. Very. Life is dependent on it. And he found one of his buckle was loose. If he had jumped, Powell would not have been alive. So, even in a conflict, don't imagine or exaggerate, but go out and check and you will find out what is the truth. And then, simplify. We simplify things. Look at the iceberg. The tip is only 9 to 10%. 90% of our things, the power within us is below the water. You and I do not know. Have you realized right from birth onwards, all we're doing is learning skills, whether walking, toddling, eating, sleeping, fighting, acquiring, writing skill, reading skill, mathematical skill, and then more skill, and then becoming a manager and things like that, is all towards getting skilled towards outwards, outwards, outwards. But we are forgetting this below the iceberg, which is within us. And it is not 9, 10 and 90, just symbolically. It is the entire thing of us is within us. So, famous Advaita sentence, what you find outside of us is nothing compared to what's within us. And expressing that divinity from within, Vedanta says, Vivekananda that spread to the whole world is education, is schooling, is parenting. So depending on the perception we create, Ramana is just telling, Rama waiting on the shore. And 100 Yojana is the distance between Sri Lanka and the Indians, the Trivandrum. Oh, he's asking, who can jump and go and check? Jambu one. The Prime Minister of the whole troop says, I can jump 90. Now, what had happened is, Hanumanji, when he was born, he had tremendous power. And he was lying down, must be two, three, six months old baby or 12 months old baby. Age, I am not aware. If any of you are aware, please share with me. He saw a son and he wanted to go and eat that fruit. So he started going towards it. Oh, heaven and the, everybody started shaking. All the gods are scared. If sun is swallowed up and eaten up by Anubanji, what will happen to this planet Earth? <laughs> and Indra eventually sent his Vajra and it strikes the boy, boy falls down. Pavan Devta is very angry. He says, I stop giving air to this Earth. Everybody will die. And there is utter chaos just because of one boy. The gods and says, tell Pavandevta, okay, since you have spoken, you make it true. Whatever we have spoken, we make it true. We will only give one little curse, small curse to Anumanji, that his power, he will forget about it until and unless somebody tells him that you are powerful. Now on that Lanka shore, Lanka that side, this side to Bandhu, in which Jambuban sees Hanumanji sitting quietly, little morose. He's thinking, I can't do anything for my Lord Ram. He doesn't know that he can jump. No? The Jambuban goes up to him and he says, Arise awake, Vivekananda's words. You are the son of Pavan. 
you are the only one who can do it. And then it goes on a little bit more, but Hanumanji grows and grows and grows and he jumps 100 yojana at nothing at all. Sukriva sees Ravana's brother Vivishan coming in through the air. Sugriva tells Rama, that is a Rakshasa coming, let's kill him. He is going to come and spy on us and he will go back and report it. Rama said, don't. Look at him, calm, collected. A spy, Rakshasa coming. And he tells, just because one Rakshasa is bad, it doesn't mean all the Rakshasas are bad. He receives Vibhishan. Vibhishan comes and says, I have come to join you. And these are the reasons. Rama knows the truth. And look, the whole war made a complete change. And he told Sukriva, well, why are you worried? Just like that, you're getting worried. The war has not begun as yet, but war did begin in their mind. So our, if you look at our complex management, before the thing happens, we are worrying, worrying, worrying. We're going to Mumbai highway, Speeding up 100, 120, 130 kilometers, depending on the car you drive. I see one. Tired bus may cause injury to life. And I start worrying. Oh my God, I hope it doesn't happen. Hey, how can it happen to you? You say, I am protected. This car is protected. Everybody with me, not only this car, six cars with me, all my devotees, all the six are 15. All the cars are protected by a bubble of protection by Babaji, Krishna, Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara, Divine Mother and Ma Gurudev. We are protected. No one can touch. Hey, can't we say the same thing for this corona? Do not let it put fear in your mind. So, if we see one person from a family has deceived us, we brand the whole family. Everybody in that family is like that. Incorrect statement. In war, if the opponent is invisible in the G, you can't do anything. If the opponent comes and surrounds and surrenders and joins you, you cannot do anything. You cannot do any harm to him. And the opponent is leaving the battleground you cannot do anything. Indrajit was utilizing wrong technique, which is not as per the conditions of the war agreement. Lakshman saw Indrajit's arrows of killing thousands of his soldiers and also hurting Lakshman and Rama. Lakshman says, he picks up his Vajrastra and he says, I'm going to use this Brahmastra and kill all the Rakshasas. Rama holds his hand. Notice, he said, just because of one Rakshasa, all the Rakshasas, if you kill, it will not be correct. It will not be fair. Notice, the decision of Rama, up beautifully. We get angry. But does it mean we are always angry? Or somebody gets angry with me? Wait. Husband and wife fighting all the time. Neighbor's husband, wife, and this husband, wife. Suddenly the neighbor's husband and wife, wife particularly sees the wife on the next door has stopped fighting. She comes and says, what is the secret? Teach me. I don't want to fight. But we always disagree. <laughs> so... This young wife of the neighbor says, you know, my Gurudev had come. So I told him, he's given me a medicine. So I was told, the, as you know, fight is going to start. You put it into your mouth, but don't swallow the medicine. Hold it in your mouth. So I do that and no more fights. She said, wow, give me also that medicine. So she gives part of that medicine to him. A little later, Gurudev comes back and this lady comes back. So says, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Both of them, we don't have any more fights. Sir, what did you give? We want more of that medicine. He said, you have lots of that medicine. He said, where is it? He said, is it in your mind? 
so yes yes i know we have all that but we the do to be a ready he said now all i did i gave you a little water i told you to put it in your mouth don't swallow it so that you can't talk when you don't talk you cannot disagree <laughs> a simple trick do not cross lakshmana's gandhi if sita had not crossed the whole ramayan would not have happened but then we would not have learned so many conflict isn't it so basically the bad things also have limits good things also have limits supposing i love to eat pizza or hamburger i cannot eat 12 of them then there will be problem isn't it so similarly with the emotions and then is the point is the nulli magnify hanuman ji magnified himself and you know what hanuman ji forgot about his power there is a meaning on that from the ramayan you know what is that sir ma'am divide devotees you and i have forgotten who we are the power within us just like jayasi bajrangbali hanuman ji he had forgotten till somebody told hey guru is telling us tat tomasi and shweta ketu selling father it is only in the book and he says it nine times in manaki upanishad tells him chandakya upanishad i stand for it nine times you are the one so the amazing power which is lying within our awareness consciousness utilize that focus it direct it and just watch yes we have to do practices because of that and we generally tend to <laughs> whatever our troubles are we tend to enhance it jambuvar is the guy who went and woke up hanuman ji we need friends keep friends and those who are enemy learn to make friends you know this is a very simple understanding i got it through the vedanta today why is it we have fighting friends or fighting husband or you know a hitting husband or a nagging wife or a bad boss all it is because we have to learn how to handle that by calling on the inner power from within the moment i do that i will not have any more i will not have even poverty i will not have a bad job problem anything unify get everybody together notice rama was told by jatayu ravan has gone to lanka but yet rama spread the word to east to north and to west also before going to south told everybody why he wanted everybody's opinion in favor and against ravana to know what you're doing and he wanted others to know evil shall always lose and the truth and purity shall always win you generally tend to create bridges when you start building on it and big bigger bridges from that little power from within when you join together imagine prime minister you have been made suddenly a prime minister can you run the whole country by yourself <laughs> no you need people you need staff under you so in mathematics 2 plus 2 is 4 but in vedanta 2 plus 2 can be infinite infinite is the power of understanding and the awareness pacify satyam vada shankaracharya's word speak the truth always tell the truth apriyam satyam ma vada don't tell which is not peaceful to hear and then he says 
that speak always sweet words. Always speak in such a way that the people feel pacified. Be careful of our tongue. So now, if you look at Dashrata, Kaushalya, all the citizens, Lakshman, everybody told Rama, don't. But Rama stayed collected. No, I must follow the truth. Rama accepted the situation as it was. And only when you accept, you pacify yourself, know how to face the world. This is the situation. And I have to find the answer. From where? Where the answer? In the prophet. That's what we learned from Ramayana. And the moment you pacify, you will see that the whole problem, the moment you accept changes, the meaning changes, entire universal energy comes unto you. And just imagine, Rama came back after 14 years. And see, because he had accepted that 14 years of one of us, he comes and does pranam to Mother Kaikeyi. Most of you have seen it in the TV, read it. I used to love reading. I had written three, three different authors, Rama. <laughs> Valmiki, Tulsidas, Kritibas. And what did Rama do? Mother telling Kaikeyi, you are the one, because of who I came to realize how much my father loved me that he couldn't live without me. Because of you, mother, I realized that my brother Bharat, he did not want to rule the kingdom. How much of sacrifice he did. I realized because of you, mother, the Lakshman, who's such a strong follower of me, he would not budge from anything. And Lakshmana is called consciousness. Apti Ram is Atman. Sita is Man Rupi Sita. As per Kriti Man mind is wanting to do things like cross the border, Lakshman Rekha, and things for like that. He says, because of you, I realize my wife would not ever leave my side. And even after 12 months of being kidnapped, she maintain herself with a single blade of grass. The grass was so powerful by her energy. No one could come near her. And because of you, I realized Ravana, who's my arch enemy, that he couldn't sleep without thinking of me and trying to kill me. And yet, when Ravana died, the last word he said, hey, Ram. Accept what you must. Change what you should. You need to accept. Story of Arthur Ashe. Arthur Ashe, this so happened, the first apparition to win the Wimbledon. And naturally a great person, personality. Arthur Ashe had given his blood for a blood transfusion to somebody. He was a great personality, very kind, very good person, a really sports person, sports man. In that blood transfusion, because of some mistake by the hospital, he contracted AIDS. But you know, Arthur Ashe did not sue the hospital, did not blame anybody. And one of his followers wrote to Arthur Ashe, is one of his follower fan. Arthur, why does God have to punish you? You're such a great fan. With this terrible disease, AIDS, you know what Arthur Ash answered? He replied, he wrote it back and it, this letter is there. He said, every year, 50 million children want to learn to hold a tennis racket with an intention to play. But only 50 million connected with the ball, learn to bounce the ball, holding the racket both together. And only half a million out of that 50 million eventually learn to play actually that tennis. And 50,000 who try out of that half a million 
try to come into the competitive world in the tennis. Out of that 50,000, only 5,000 enter the professional circuit. And out of 5,000, only 500 get a chance to play in the Grand Slam contest. And only 50 get a chance to play in the Wimbledon, out of which only four gets into, he said it, semi also, four gets into semi, two faces the final. When I was holding my Wimbledon Cup after winning it, did I say, God, why me? Look at acceptance. It's not only Ramayan. You and I are people who are also doing it in life. Today, I know many of you. Nullify the situation. Soldiers come from the war. They do not know how to nullify. They still keep on dreaming on it. And you may see many Hollywood, Bollywood films. And it is eating them up. And they become a terrible vivision. After Ravana died, Ravana has to be cremated. Rama said, Vivishan, please. Vivishan said, no, I refuse to cremate. He is demon. He's really a demon. He's a shame on my family. And he went against you, who is God. I don't want to cremate him. Rama holds Vivishan's hand and says, Vivishan, stop. Understand that. Stop hating and hurting yourself. Have you realized when you hate someone? So what is the great message? Holy Mother Sharada says it again and again. Don't fight fault in others. He tells Vibhishan, do your work, do your duty. Ravana is dead. And now he has become my brother. Because everybody in this universe is me. Isn't it? We know that. Nelson Mandela. Just think. 28 years those of you who have been and heard about it or read Cape Town, Robben Island. He was put into a cell, six feet by four feet, height was five feet. And Nelson Mandela is very tall. He couldn't even stand straight in that room. And he was kept there for 28 years. John Boster, who was at that time in the Ministry of Justice, subsequently became like the prime minister. And he was pro-white racist. He tried his best to keep Nelson and kill him there. For 16 years, he tried to get him to the high court and get his death order passed. He couldn't do it. After 28 years, Nelson Mandela, when he comes out, the reporters goes running to him and, Sir, Mr. Mandela, what is your comment on John Boster? You know what Nelson Mandela says? He says, John Boster is a nice, decent man. One line, said, and then he goes off. Doesn't make any complaint. This is the power of acceptance and that vision of peace. After 14 years, Ram comes to Kwaike, and I already told you how he explained the situation. That is what, you know, Bruce Lee, all of you have seen, and one of his Bruce Lee's students, he was in about 30s. His name is Joe Hines, and he was learning from Bruce Lee, one of his students, 30 years old American, and Bruce Lee was showing him a kick and it was way above his head. He said, come on, stretch your leg. And Joe Hines says, I can't. My age, 30 years. He said, what is this age? Its limit is in your mind. He said, do you know my one leg is one inch short? I recollected when I read this why I'm talking to you. Do you know I had met with terrible accident. And one of the accident, my leg became short by one inch. Very few people know about it. I'm not at all ashamed of it. I wear one inch heel so that I don't limp when I'm walking. But look at it. Whole world told me you can never fly. All the doctors. But I kept trying, kept trying. And I remember my father's day. On this father's day, my father told me, never give up. 
just simple. There was a situation and I did it and it was an impossible situation. And he smiled and he said, son, never give up. I didn't give up. And look at it. I flew the best of the planes. I commanded a fighter squadron. I became a test pilot. I became a CAT instructor, combat trainer, sent to many countries. All that is what? Never give up. Bruce Lee tells Johan, do you know that I can't see more than six feet away because I'm nearsighted. I always wore contact lens from a baby's age. I've kept it as a secret. So continue. Do not be beaten down by your conditions, by the situation which is there. They will always beat you. Did you know you must listen to these? Conflicts will remain, but God has put you on this earth for a higher purpose. Did you know that Mahatma Gandhi at the age of 12, did you know that he wanted to commit suicide? If he had succeeded, luckily he didn't succeed. India's independence day would have been different. Do you know Martin Luther King, he tried to commit suicide twice at the age of seven and at the age of 12, twice. He didn't succeed. He became one of the greatest of the literature, literest. He was wanting to jump out of the window. And his African-American got a voice of freedom from Martin Luther King. Maxim Gorky shot himself in the lung himself to kill himself at the age of 21. Because he didn't die, we got the best of the literature from Maxim Gorky. And H.G. Wells, many of you must have read Good Earth and many other Wells, 78 books H.G. Wells have written. H.G. Wells wanted to commit suicide at the age of 15. And he wrote a letter to his English teacher. He was very fond of writing and he used to write very well. Teacher, when she got the letter, she wrote back to him quickly. H.G., you always wrote so well. Would you like to write to me before you commit suicide? Why do you want to commit suicide? And you know what? He started writing and back and forth. He didn't commit suicide. 78 books he wrote thereafter. All this situation. Remember, whenever there is a situation as a conflict, don't go with the suffering. Don't go with the pain. But my words, reflect on it. Think on it. Grow with the suffering. Grow with the pain. Become bigger. Any conflict comes on your way. Whether a child falling down is for you to run better and do better. Trusted Narada. Valyu Ratnakar was another name, Valyu. Told him. And he gave him the mantra Rama, he couldn't even say it. Well, you realize nobody wants to support. If I have to go to prison only, I will go. No family is going to go with me. Nobody will take my punishment. Well, you became Valmiki. So, no situation is bad enough. And Valmiki, the sage who wrote Ramayan, the biggest challenges and conflicts are always self-transformation. Transforms you to a higher Pains are meant for gains. Difficult to perceive it, but perceive, sustain. And if you hold on to these eight principles, what I talked about, why conflict never ends? Because we don't listen. If my wife or my friend is fighting with me, I'm already trying to answer best. I try to cut it down. I don't want to listen. I'm not listening. In the, in the ancient time, when the two sages or two Tarakshastas used to fight with each other. It was very famous. Let's say Ramanujam. Ramanujam has to say exactly what the opponent has said, completed saying, and then only he will answer point by point by point. This is what is the ancient Vedanta. So don't be, take a deep breath and hold a breath and working on your mind to give an answer when you face a conflict. Wait. Hold a smile, not a mocking smile, okay? 
be gentle, understand, reflect on it. You may nod your head up and down. I love to do that. I say, is this what you said? Is this what is your question? And then I go ahead and answer. Forget about the little conflict on this earth. God has given us the power to face every single creature of his creation. We have the power. A lesson for the mosquitoes. Do you know this? For mosquitoes, they cannot, they breed in the water. The moment they fly out, they cannot go back to the water. When the rain starts, each rain droplet, if it hit the mosquito, it should be the end of him. He goes down with the mosquito, scientists have found out, goes down with the droplet, about four or five centimeters down in the air. And then he slips out of it and goes back again to that same place where he was. And look at it, mosquitoes never die. Look at the cockroaches, never die. It's supposed to be one of the oldest. So first to dodge, second to go with the flow, that's what the mosquitoes do. Third to slip off. And fourth, to be resilient, to get back to where it was and higher, grow with the pain. And then do 100,000 million times better than what you had done before. So why is it we don't? We think. Mosquitoes don't think. And we think and we don't survive. We try to create and blow it up our problems. Start living. Stop worrying. Worry only creates problem for us. So enlightened personality, you would never have conflict. Why is the enlightened person? They smile all the time. They know this too shall pass. I wish you good luck. And I've finished with this today's session. Thank you for being so patient. Should you have any questions? Go ahead. Any comments? Any questions? Any doubts? If there are none, let us finish with the prayer. Akasha Shanti, Prithvi Shanti, Vayu Shanti, Jalaspataya Shanti, Agnaya Shanti, Gau Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. May all the directions bring freedom from all sickness, may bring peace and happiness and joy and shield you, protect you from all sickness and disease. Anywhere in the world, anywhere on this earth, anywhere in India, and may protect you from all evil. Okay.